Hello and welcome to our program, Violence Free World. My name is Kali Igwe. Youth restiveness has remained on the burner for multiple reasons. And we believe that fake news complicates the whole situation. And that will be the thrust of our program today. We'll return with our special guest on the house in a bit. Be here. A mental catalog of opposite twin things parade natural realities like plus and minus, negative and positive, good and evil, love and hate, life and darkness and light to a limitless point. Also very notable within this catalog is a duo of truth and lie from which stems the bedrock of the phenomenon known as fake news. If the world information system and order had changed with the coming of uh, the social media, uh, we, we on like traditional times when we used to have gatekeepers who would, by a professional calling, would have to validate uh, information or news as it were. Now it's, it's as if everybody is a purveyor of news. We need to be careful of circulating fake news because those who circulate fake news as damaging as those who originated. The terminology of fake news is an oxymoron that describes information presented as news, which in actual sense is not. Fake news masquerade as news with an intent to fool unsuspecting audience and readers. It is a practice that seeks to achieve certain selfish agenda with the potential to generate upheaval. It makes you believe anything because of the gullibility of the people. I'm very unfortunate. That is what the political leaders in Nigeria you know, used to work. The targeting of news, uh, the sentiments of news, and uh, the, uh, the objectivity of news are all together you know, uh, undermined, as it were. Uh, undermined and, uh, of course, reduced to the personal uh, vindictiveness sometimes of, uh, of individuals. There is a bit of ambiguity though as to just what can be categorized as fake news given that there are instances of outright fabrications presented as news, correct information presented outside of its original context, and headlines that deviate completely from the body of the story, and also partial supply of facts for varying purposes. I think going forward it's important that we should all, as a matter of responsibility, treat every information or every news, quote and unquote, however you want to put it, every news from the social media, you know, with some bit of discretion and make effort to validate the news. You can't stop whoever wants to circulate any news. It's up to us to look into whatever we want to say, the message we want to circulate as we received make sure we verify the authenticity of that uh, information. It is the worst thing that can happen to a people. Nobel Laurel, Wallace Shoinka, perhaps, raised the most alarm when he warned that fake news would cause the Third World War. Recent incidents of unrest, particularly the end south protests, has again, like other situations, been subjected to so much mistruth that has left many at a loss as to just what to believe or disbelieve. With social media, the taking for granted gatekeeping control mechanism for news reporting is virtually non-existent. Official regulation, therefore, is difficult, leaving practitioners mostly to their conscience to self-regulate, a measure that has largely not worked. Why the federal government of Nigeria continue in their effort to further regulate citizen journalism with tougher penalties, they may wish to consider the recommendation of the United Nations that it is necessary to subject all perceived mis- and disinformation to legality, necessity, and proportionality tests before limiting freedom of expression even in cases of public health threats. This same measure will suffice to combat fake news especially when the impact on freedom of expression is minimal. Restraint should therefore be the watchword as we crave a violence-free Nigeria.
Welcome back. It's time to meet our guest and it's someone very, very interesting. Very interesting because it's a woman in the house, a very special woman. Barista Zainab Marwa Abubakar, the president and founder of Aspire Women Forum. Madam, you're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you for having me. Now, let's go straight to the issues now. Fake news has been in the air, and like we hinted earlier, complicates situations in a lot of instances. As destructive as it is, is this showing any sign of simmering down, or it looks like it's something that we have to contend with all through our lives? That's a really good question. Um, fake news in and of itself is something that has been in existence from time immemorial. But for, I think, um, this particular show, the focus would be on mainly things like social media. So there was a study that was handled by MIT, and they did this in conjunction with Twitter, where they looked at uh, about 126,000 um, news portals from bots and then from humans as well. And they found that real news spreads highest to 1,000 people, whereas fake news can go up to even 100,000 people. You know the old saying that goes, you know, fake news, rumors, gossip, it always travels much farther. So I don't think that um, it would simmer down in and of itself unless, you know, some measures are actually taken to, to take control of the situation. One very interesting thing, have you observed that even those who complain about fake news a lot of times, sometimes are complicit in the spreading of fake news. Government, for instance, will tell you that something is in existence and it turns out false. Is it a situation of applying it when it uh, suits you, when it's convenient? So who is not guilty of fake news ultimately? Well, interestingly enough, human beings generally prefer so-called fake news because at times it may be salacious, it might be interesting. Things that you create, you sit down and create without any fact behind it. You, you, you know, you don't have to look at morals. You can just create very interesting um, stories. A lot of people are prone to use fake news when it suits them, not just governments, individuals. Definitely governments all around the world are implicit to some certain degree of spreading fake news. So they're also purveyors of fake news. To mind. some extent, <laughs> but not to a large extent. You see, that even makes it even more uh, complicated. But when going forward, uh, there are instances of um, situations that have been very, very volatile around the world, not just in Nigeria. Which one would you attribute largely to fake news? Um, well, in America, for example, in the last elections that they had, you know, um, most of the Democrats did say that Russia used fake news and, you know, the Internet to orchestrate Donald Trump's um, victory. Uh, of course, he refutes this totally. But there's been some research that showed that th this claim is actually true. And even in Nigeria, the recent um, issues that we've had with the NSARS movement, a lot of happenings during and after, you know, the aftermath have been attributed to fake news. For example, you know, the lady that they saw sitting on the back of a lion crying. The story went out there that she had lost her brother and she was crying over her brother's death at the hands of SARS, which she actually came out to refute and say it wasn't true. And I think up to five, six, seven people were shown on social media to have died during the protests. You know, RIPs were flying left, right and center. Those same people came out to say that, you know, they, for example, the copper that they showed with the um, bloody flag, they actually came out to say that it was actually for a drama for Nigeria at 60. So we've, we've had, you know, then you, you lose trust when you hear anything about even the movement itself because you don't know what to believe and that's obviously due to fake news. So these are the most, I think, volatile issues that come to mind when asked such a question. Apparently, you see, we had a situation in, in a build up to the 2015 general elections, 2019 general elections as well, and it doesn't seem like we have learned enough lessons, especially when you look at its um, 
against what just happened with the NSA situation, where people are coming up to say this actually happened, only for it to turn around that it is. That's not taking it away that some things, but terrible Absolutely. things actually happened there, definitely. But what do we really benefit from escalating um, what actually happened? We all know that you know, bad things happened of recent during this NSARS protest. But because of the amount of fake news, then you start to question every bit of news that comes to you. Generally in life, when you exaggerate things, when you increase the salaciousness of things, you make them more exciting, people get drawn in. Sometimes you see even the headings of stories are very, very exaggerated. And then when you read the story, there's nothing of the sort within the body of the story. And right now we live in an information-centric world where everyone is craving to know, everyone is craving to find out what's the next big thing. So we are in this, you know, this, I don't know, win-lose situation, especially with social media where... We need the news, the way that we're getting it now, fast-paced, easy to digest. But we're also having the problem where, you know, any individual can sit down and type anything on their computer or on their phone, send it out as news. Well, even the self uh, uh, self check mechanism, which is um, the, the 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 gatekeeping mechanism in news in journalism, does not work with um, citizen journalism. Now, this takes me to government's insistence or attempt at trying to control the social media space or citizen journalism, again, if you like, to the extent that they are even prescribing stiffer penalties. Do you think this would work? How really should we go about this? This is checkable. Yeah, I think that it is checkable to some certain extent. Um, of course, you also, you don't just look at the law, you look at the implementation of the law. And then you look up at the re realistic nature of the law. And like you said, very harsh and um, rude reckoning would come to a person who is found to be guilty of spreading fake news or hate speech on social media. It's, it's, a, it's a push and pull because Generation Z, as you call them, um, are very much into the social media space and they feel that it's their right to air their views and to say whatever comes to their mind. I don't think that most of the perpetrators of fake news actually know how divisive and how destructive and damaging fake news can actually be because in some cases it could actually lead to the loss of lives. There was a case in the U.S., where, um, you know, this pizza gate against the Democrats, where they said that there was a child pedophilia ring, where they murder children and they traffic children through a particular pizza parlor in, in the United States. And a man walked in there with a gun and was trying to kill everybody. And he was screaming that there were children hidden in the basement of a restaurant that doesn't even have a basement. And all of this information he got from Twitter. So it's, you know, th this fake news thing can be very, very damaging and destructive. Okay, I think you hold it up right there. We'll come back and then talk about injustice and then what Aspire Women Forum is doing to help the situation. Yeah. This is Violence Free World. We'll be right back after this timeout. Stay here.
Welcome back. This is Steve Valens Free World, and in the house today, as my guest is Zainab Marwa Abubakar, a barrister at law and president and founder of Aspire Women Forum. Well, man, as we were saying, we said we we're going to talk about injustice. Now, youthfulness generally is blamed on perceived injustice, unemployment, underemployment, harassment uh, of ordinary citizens by men in uniform, mm -hmm. not just the police. I'm referring to the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the NCDC, all of them. How does this hit you and what are you doing about this? I feel that um, such oppression is not um, relegated only to the youth or meted out only to the youth. But yes, you know, if a youth is between the age of 18 and 35, according to the UN. And I think that, of course, we, because I am part of them, have this issue of um, this self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, where you are told that you are lazy, you are, you know, stupid, um, you are a drug head. And over the course of the past two decades, we have slowly become that which we have been spoken to be. Um, why, why do I say this? If you look at the educational background of you know, the Nigerian graduate, university graduate, you'll be surprised to note that a lot of graduates cannot sit down and pen you an essay that makes any sense. And that's not because they, they, they in, in and of themselves are you know, illiterate or uneducated or even lazy to learn. The system itself has failed the youth. That's my candid opinion. The system as it exists in Nigeria today has failed the youth. Asu strikes, leave you at home, so you spend a longer time out of school, um, sex for grades, scandals, all of these things take, take note. Now, there is an analogy that I usually use about um, youth in Nigeria. And you know, in the world generally, you come across a youth, you know, and say that they're lazy. And now, you see them on the ground and say they're lazy. How does that come about? I, as a young woman, might come to you for help. Or oh, can you help me in this way or that way? You say no. I decide to stand up and build my own company. Still, you use your powers to push me down. I stand up again. You push me down again. And then finally, when you push me down one time, I'm lying there. So another person walks by, sees me lying on the ground and says, look at this very, very lazy youth not taking into account the fact that actually I have spent a long time trying, pushing. I know that power is not served a la carte. Success is not served a la carte. You do need to push, you need to be persistent. But unfortunately, when there's a system that is rigged against you, where you are being weaponized, so in politics even, you see a lot of young people, look at how the NSARS um, um, uh, protesting was actually hijacked by hoodlums. They were being weaponized against their fellow youth and they're not given the right amount of education to know that whatever these people are fighting for, maybe they, they, they might not be doing it the way that they should be doing it, but they're standing up and I could stand up with them. Rather, they were weaponized against those same people. Do you understand? It's really uh, disheartening and sad when you look at um, things that are said against my generation, um, known as millennials. When you look at the millennials and the generation Z, people are looking down upon them and forgetting that we're all trying. Maybe we're not trying the way you tried. You know, it's different now, but we're trying nonetheless. Hmm. Well, that's deep. That was deep. And I was going to add to that, from not even um, assisting where you were supposed to, you push the person into that violent type that you abhor. Yeah. So now I'm going to the next um, issue now, which is the Aspire Women Forum. What is Zainab doing with this? Well, um, Aspire Women Forum is aimed at galvanizing women to action. We have three main areas of focus, being um, motivational behavioral coaching, um, financial inclusion and also politics. I ran for House of Reps um, the, the, just this last election uh, in FCT, Bwari and Amak um, federal constituencies. And I was eight months pregnant on the day of my election. Mm. 
but I still went to each and every of my 22 wards. And, you know, I did it with a smile. I did it with vigor. I did it with valor. I did not emerge victorious, but I think that I still won for myself, for my constituents, for my fellow women, for my fellow youth. So I was very proud of myself for doing this. And that's why I, in turn, turned around and created Aspire Women Forum, because I found that you know, this um, theory of motivation that looks at self-actualization as propounded by Abraham Maslow says that one can self-actualize at any time in their lives and also in any field. So we're not saying you must be the next president or you must be an accountant or a lawyer. We're saying if you want to be a wife, I'm a wife, be the best wife. If you want to be a mother, I'm a mother of five, be the best mother you can be. If you want to be the president, you know, be the best present that you can be. So self-actualize in any ramification that you, you want progress for yourself. And you spoke about, you know, what were, you asked the question, what am I doing with regard to, um, you know, the, the unrest with the youth? Yes. So while Gender we have... Gender violence too. Yes. So while we have Aspire Women Forum, we also have Aspire Young Women Forum because we have some young women that we mentor to greatness. So we're still giving them the tools to aspire and achieve that greatness. We keep telling them to aspire for higher and keep pushing them to, you know, to self-actualize. Now, when it comes to um, gender-based violence, we, did, we don't look at things like rape. What we did look at during the 2019 elections is VAWI, which is violence against women in elections, because I and my women actually came under fire during the elections. How do you mean by you came under fire? So, well, not fire, I'm, I'm speaking figurative. That's what I'm trying to explain. We, we would have women on the day of election because we had a direct elections, an FCT here, and, um, you know, holding their children and things like that. People would come and try to take them away from our line, um, and they declined to move. And so they started to beat them. They started to stone them. And a lot of my people were injured. Aspire Women Forum stood in solidarity with the women, especially during the election time, under the politics arm of our operations. Okay, generally, I would like to get your word of advice to young people for who this program is designed. You're an opinion um, leader. You are a leader. And I think it will be gratifying to hear from you, it will be soothing to hear from you. Now our country bonds more or less like. The tempers may have calmed down uh, physically, but in their minds, there's a fire that's still born. And if this is not properly organized, if it's not properly carried out, we may just lose it. Like you see, what happened? You, you, you know what happened, what just happened? Please, your word of advice for everyone. Um, my word of advice is, let peace speak. And I can proudly say that with this NSARS movement, the real movement, there was peace. Everything was peacefully done. We saw with great pride that um, they were able to manage their funds. They were able to create um, health care for those protesting, food, and so on and so forth. So the first thing that I would definitely advise is let peace prevail. Now, on a more personal level, you know, um, tensions get high and things don't work out when you feel that you're not successful. So I do want to reiterate again that success, power, these things are not handed out a la carte. You need to claw for them. You need to work hard for them. For me, the best piece of advice that I would give is what Napoleon Hill said, which is perseverance is the key. Consistency is the key. The world is full of creatives that are failures. The world is full of educated people that are fools. The world is full of rich people that die poor. But when you persevere, when you push yourself past your, your self-comfort zone, when you don't give up, definitely something will give and you will break through. Well, Zainab Marwa Abubakar, I think that's a very, very good point to leave it. At this point, I'd like to thank you very much for finding time to oblige You're us. You're welcome. Well, my guest as a barrister at law and president and founder of Aspire Women Forum. Same time next week promises even more if you endeavor to be here. My name is Kali Ikwe. Until then, please remember to remain on the road to 
a violence free Nigeria. Thank you for watching. Supposed to bring